Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is Ryan, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. 2022 is over. A new year has begun. Which means, for me at least, it's time to look back at the previous year in terms of video games and celebrate all that that year had to offer. And in terms of video games, my god, 2022 was a fantastic year. I had so much fun, and not just with all the new releases that came out. Because just about all of my favorite video games that released in the year previous, 2021, all got DLC and expansions that released just last year, 2022. The year really surprised me, actually, with the amount of substantial DLC expansion content that we received. Really happy to see that this business practice is still alive and kicking. So for this video, I wanted to take a look back and praise all of the awesome new DLC expansion content that came out and I got to play in 2022. Starting us off, we have the game Destiny 2 and its expansion, The Witch Queen. The Destiny game franchise is well known for having some critically acclaimed DLC expansions, from The Taken King in Destiny 1 to Forsaken in Destiny 2. But I gotta say, as someone who's been playing Destiny 2 since the game first launched in 2017, I can easily say without hesitation that the Witch Queen expansion is the best Destiny content that's ever released ever existed, this is Destiny at its full, realized potential. The Witch Queen campaign is a phenomenal first-person shooter experience, whether played single-player or in co-op. It has an engaging story, really well-designed levels and combat encounters, with puzzles and platforming mixed in there to always keep you on your toes. Outside of the campaign, the new open-world environment, the throne world, is truly a sight to behold. The artists over at developer Bungie have outdone themselves yet again. On one hand, we have this awe-inspiring hive architecture, the other, this dark and imposing alien swamp, with a beautiful contrast of vibrant colors. And this new open world is filled with satisfying progression systems, and side quest content. All of the new weapons that you can unlock and collect in the Witch Queen expansion are so fun and so cool looking. And the new raid that comes with this expansion. Well, Destiny raid content is usually hailed as some of the best cooperative first-person shooter experiences you can have in a video game, and this new raid upholds that legacy. Look, to put it simply, if you have any interest in playing Destiny 2, you have to get the Witch Queen expansion, and you have to play it. It is the definitive Destiny experience. It is the best content that Destiny has to offer. I've always really liked Destiny 2, even when it was going through its rough patches. But with the Witch Queen expansion, I've really come to love Destiny 2, and it's now one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. The Witch Queen expansion is just that good. Speaking of video game expansions that elevate their base game and make them better than they ever were before, up next we have Monster Hunter Rise and its expansion, Sunbreak. This is our outpost, Elgato. Now don't get me wrong, the base game of Monster Hunter Rise is good, but it paled in comparison to the previous game in the series, Monster Hunter World. But now, with the Sunbreak expansion, I would argue that Monster Hunter Rise now matches World in terms of quality. The Sunbreak expansion turned a good game into a fucking fantastic one. First off, the Sunbreak campaign easily has the best story and characters we've ever seen in a mainline Monster Hunter game. Monster Hunter games aren't really known for their compelling stories and characters, so it was really surprising and refreshing to play through the Sunbreak campaign and actually be invested. I found a couple of the characters memorable and likable. Your new hunting companion, Dame Fiorain, in particular. But this is Monster Hunter after all. We're here for the new monsters, and each of the new additions found in the Sunbreak expansion are excellent and have easily become some of my new favorite monsters in Monster Hunter. Garangolm, Luna Garon, and Malzino? Oh, geez, such excellent additions. So much fun to fight. And all their new armor and weapons to craft look amazing. 
Oh, then there's the two brand new open world levels to explore and fight in, the jungle and the citadel, easily becoming my favorite locations in the game. Then there's the new gameplay edition of Switch Skills, which adds so much more depth to what was an already deep combat system, just allowing you instant simultaneous access to all these different abilities, special moves, and combos. And then there is what is probably my absolute favorite addition in this expansion, companion quests. Being able to go out on hunts with AI companions. Being able to fight and slay monsters with the colorful cast of characters of Monster Hunter Rise. Such a great addition, I love it, and I hope this feature becomes a mainstay of the series going forward. So yeah, just like with Destiny 2, if you're gonna play that game, you need to get the Witch Queen expansion. With Monster Hunter Rise, if you're gonna play this game, you need to get the Sunbreak expansion. You're simply playing a lesser game without it. Speaking of lesser games, Here's a funny hypothetical for you. What happens when a standalone expansion for a game turns out being of better quality and becoming far more critically acclaimed than the game it's based off of? Well, this actually isn't a hypothetical. It's a reality. With Serious Sam, Siberian Mayhem. Serious Sam Siberian Mayhem is a standalone expansion to Serious Sam 4. Now, while I like Serious Sam 4, the game certainly had its rough edges. And after playing Siberian Mayhem, I gotta agree with the public consensus. This standalone expansion is just more well-made than the game it's based off of. The environments and levels are gorgeous to look at, begging to be explored, filled to the brim with secrets and collectibles. But the combat encounters, the combat encounters are so much more well-paced and consistently intense. I play Serious Sam games to shoot, blow up, and kill a ridiculous number of enemies on screen, and the levels in Siberian Mayhem deliver in spades. Oh, and the new weapons! The AK-47, the crossbow, the burner ray gun. They all look and feel so good! Oh, and all of the new enemy types and bosses are surprisingly fun to fight and add satisfying new challenges to combat. Finally, the piece de resistance uh, there's a set piece where you get to pilot a mech with a rocket launcher on one arm and a giant chainsaw on the other. Yeah, Serious Sam Siberian Mayhem is just good, silly-ass fun. It takes what were the best parts of Serious Sam 4, hones those elements, and then amplifies them. Which just so happens to be like our next game, Outriders, and its expansion, World Slayer. Better move fast, Outrider. Big storm coming. Outriders was one of my favorite games released in 2021. I loved the combat, I loved the world building and lore, and I loved the loot and player customization. And the World Slayer expansion was just more of all of that. It made me put a stupid amount of more hours into this game that I had already put a stupid amount of hours into. The new story campaign, while short, contains some absolutely beautiful environments and visual set pieces. As someone who really liked the story, lore, and world building, World Slayer was a delight, as it answered so many questions and revealed the answers to so many mysteries that were brought up in the base main game. But of course, the star of the show was all the new loot, the new weapons, the new armor, the new customization and progression systems. The amount of build variety and playstyle variety is off the charts. The World Slayer expansion took a game that I already really liked, Outriders, and just gave me more of it and made it better. However, I've gotta say, putting my personal biases aside, I've gotta be objective here and admit that the price tag for this expansion is simply too steep. $50 Canadian? $40 American? Nuh uh, man. As much as I love the content present in World Slayer, as much as I enjoyed playing it, I have to concur with public consensus that there simply isn't enough content to justify the price tag of the expansion. Again, I love the Outriders World Slayer expansion and have had a blast playing it. But yeah, it's still a wee bit too expensive. In contrast, the last couple of expansions that came out for the game, Back for Blood, are much more fairly priced and worth every penny. Those expansions being the Children of the Worm expansion and the River of Blood expansion. We shall reach our true potential in paradise! Yeah. 
All three of Back for Blood's DLC expansions came out in 2022, and I really gotta say, hats off to developer Turtle Rock Studios, as they were really pumping out the content for Back for Blood in 2022, with tons of free content updates alongside these big, meaty DLC expansions. While the first DLC expansion, The Tunnels of Terror, did leave a bit to be desired, the latter two expansions, Children of the Worm and River of Blood, are genuinely fantastic pieces of content, especially River of Blood. Both of these expansions address almost every criticism that the base game of Back for Blood received. Not enough unique special enemies. Well, now we have crazy ridden cultists and this pissed off demonic looking vagina. Not enough unique and crazy fun weapons. Well, now we've got a bow and arrow, flamethrower, rocket launcher, bladed gauntlets, and much more. Not enough crazy, fun, unique, memorable levels like in the Left 4 Dead games. Well, both the Children of the Worm and the River of Blood expansion, I would argue, have the best levels, the best missions, the best environments in all of Back for Blood. In Children of the Worm, you're raiding a prison, making your way through infested mines, and trying to escape a ridden cultist stronghold. And in River of Blood, Oh my god, the levels, the missions, they're so good! They're so good! There's a level that takes place in a TV news station studio building, another that takes place in a science museum, one that takes place in a hydro dam, one that takes place in a sports coliseum. It's all so creative, colorful, fun, and varied. Now, I wasn't someone who took issue with the levels available in the base game of Back for Blood, but I have to admit, when Turtle Rock Studios starts going back to their Left 4 Dead roots and applying that to Back for Blood, we undeniably end up with some quality content here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I would recommend playing Back for Blood just to play the expansions, especially the River of Blood expansion. It's just so good! And you know what? Since we're on the topic of video games and expansions that were inspired by the game Left 4 Dead, let's talk about Aliens Fireteam Elite and its expansion, Pathogen. <laughs> The Pathogen expansion for Aliens Fireteam Elite comes with three new campaign missions, eight new weapons, a new perk for each class kit, 13 new weapon attachments, a metric shit ton of new cosmetics, three brand new enemies to fight, and Aliens Fireteam Elite's very first boss battle. Now, developer Cold Iron Studios was already killing it with the free content updates for this game, adding and giving away new weapons, new cosmetics, new game modes, all for completely free. But now with the addition of the Pathogen expansion, I can easily say that Aliens Fireteam Elite is not only one of the best and must own alien games out there for Aliens fans, but it's also one of the best co-op shooters on the market. It's got so much content, there's so much stuff to unlock. For now though, just focusing on the Pathogen expansion, it's great content and I've had a blast playing it. All of the new missions are really well designed and well paced. We get to see and explore a brand new type of environment we've never seen before, a Pathogen mutant hive. And the new Pathogen mutant enemies provide engaging, intense new challenges to combat. The Pathogen expansion for Aliens Fireteam Elite just takes a great game and makes it even better. If you enjoyed the base game, I can easily recommend the expansion, it's a must buy, it's a must play. Much like the next game we're going to talk about, which was one of the greatest video games of all time and one of the greatest video games released in the year 2021, got a DLC expansion in 2022. A DLC expansion that was completely free, mind you. I'm of course talking about the game Grime and its DLC expansion, Colors of Rot. <laughs> I can't believe this content is completely free. I would have easily paid money for this. A massive brand new environment to explore? Free brand new bosses to fight? Tons of new enemies to fight? Tons of new weapons and armor to collect? Two brand new abilities to unlock that completely change movement and environmental traversal. Look, Grime was already one of the greatest video games ever made and released. It was one of the greatest video games released in 2021. And somehow, with this completely free DLC expansion in 2022, the absolute mad lads over at developer Cloverbyte have taken what was already a masterpiece of a game 
and somehow made it even fucking better. And they did it all for free! They didn't charge nothing for this content! That's fucking mental! That's insane! Please buy and play Grime. Please support the developers over at Cloverbyte. Their stellar hard work simply must be rewarded. As for my actual feelings towards the content found in Colors of Rot, I absolutely loved all of the new boss battles. They were all unique and rewarding challenges. Their attacks and abilities really helped them stand out from the rest of the roster of bosses present in the game. Oh, and all of the new music that accompanies these bosses. Such gorgeous pieces. Grime already had a masterclass soundtrack, and now we have even more superb pieces to listen to. All of the new armor sets provide some awesome new looks alongside some unique new statistics and buffs. All of the new weapons that were added are so much fun to play with, and open the doors for so many more different builds and playstyles and attack combos. Oh boy, and then there's all the new platforming to do in the massive brand new environment, the child bed. Ooh boy, the base game of Grime already had some demanding platforming sections, but the Colors of Rot content? Oh, there was one particular platforming gauntlet that almost had me tearing my goddamn hair out, and not because it was bad in any way, mind you, but just because I really had to master my platforming skills for this and essentially get good. Simply put, if you'll indulge me for a moment as I repeat myself yet again, Grime is one of the greatest video games ever released and one of the greatest video games that released in 2021. It's completely free DLC expansion, Colors of Rot, is more of what made the base game already so phenomenal. More solid combat, more fantastic boss battles, more engaging platforming, more rewarding exploration. Grime is simply a must-play video game, and so is its new content. Speaking of must-play video games that released in the year 2021, we also have Kana Bridge of Spirits with its anniversary update, and even though it's called an update, it's basically a free DLC expansion. Kena Bridge of Spirits was my game of the year 2021 and easily one of the best, one of the greatest games released in the year 2021. A masterpiece, a near perfect video game. How do you take something so good and make it even better? Well, I guess release a DLC expansion, call it an anniversary update, release it for completely free, and somehow make a near perfect game even better. The anniversary update for Kena Bridge of Spirits comes with New Game Plus, Spirit Guide Trials, Outfits for Kana, Charm Stones, a new form of customization, and new accessibility features. Now the thing about Kana's New Game Plus mode in this update is that this content isn't the bare minimum of just being able to replay the game with all of your progression unlocks. In Kana's New Game Plus, there are brand new enemies and enemy encounters added to the game. Already existing combat encounters are changed and altered with these new additions. So it's almost like you're playing a brand new game. The Spirit Guide Trials are fantastic new pieces of content, allowing you to replay boss battles and overcome various combat and platforming challenges. The new unlockable cosmetic outfits for Kana look great, and they're all symbols of accomplishments for completing milestones within the game's story and completing various spirit guide trials. Charm stones are not only great new rewards and unlockable collectibles, but also allow for you to actually create builds for Kana, allowing you to focus on and improve certain attacks and abilities. And you're getting all of this and more for completely free. I would have paid for all this easily, gladly. It's worth the money. The effort and the passion is clearly on display. The generosity and the talent of developer Ember Lab is a sight to behold. This is their first video game ever that they've ever made, developed, and published, and they're still knocking it out of the park. There's not much else to be said here, but I will repeat myself yet again. Kana Bridge of Spirits was one of the greatest games released in 2021. It's a must-buy. It's a must-play. And now even more so with its completely free anniversary update, which honestly is a DLC expansion with the amount of content that comes with it. I had an absolute blast coming back and playing this beautiful game yet again. And that's it. We've come to the end. 
our conclusion. Those are all of the DLC expansions I played in 2022. Great games that got expanded upon with great new additional content. In 2022, not only was I having a blast playing all of the new video game releases that were coming out, but also being able to play all these awesome, amazing games and their additional content alongside them. Destiny 2, The Witch Queen, Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, Serious Sam, Siberian Mayhem, Outriders, World Slayer, Back for Blood, Children of the Worm and River of Blood, Aliens Fireteam Elite Pathogen, Grime, Colors of Rot, and Kana, Bridge of Spirits, the Anniversary Update. Oh my goodness, so much good gaming, so much fun content to play through. Don't you just love it when your favorite games just get even bigger with brand new stuff to play? I just love DLC expansions and can't wait to see what we will receive in 20. 20 free. Anyways, that's been a video. Thank you for watching. If you did indeed like the video, please be sure to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the video. If you want to help out and support the video, then please share it on social media, Twitter, Reddit, and Facebook. And if you want to help out and support me directly, please consider making a donation via YouTube Super Thanks or clicking the link to my Buy Me a Coffee page in the description down below. Anyways, once again, that's been a video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all Later.